A quick review of Ragnarok M Eternal Love. Ragnarok M is a remake of a cult classic MRPG Ragnarok Online developed in the early 2000s for PC by Gravity. Although the game is still being played to this day, Gravity already tried creating multiple spin offs, remakes, and sequels in the past, none of them gaining much recognition. This time around, we have an attempt at a remake, but exclusively for mobile devices. And how does it fare? Spoiler alert, very well. Fans of the original will find Ragnarok M to be a very familiar game. Right from the get-go, you'll be surrounded by very recognizable sights and sounds. No doubt, the first thing you'll notice are the significantly improved graphics, which are now fully 3D, but still retain that unique cartoony look of the original. The iconic soundtrack also makes a return, although with slight remixing thrown in here and there. But most importantly, however, returning is also almost the exact same gameplay. So, you start out as a novice in the world of Midgar, aiming to advance in one of the six available jobs Swordsman, Mage, Thief, Archer, Acolyte, and Merchant. With each level you assign points to your character's attributes and expand your skill tree, while at the same time gathering materials and or cards to improve your equipment. It's all a very well-known endeavor for those who used to play Ragnarok Online. Where the remake differs, however, is how it decides to expand on those core ideas. Ragnarok M borrows in droves from other MMORPGs, so you can expect to see all of the modern mechanics that become the norm in the last decade. Most notably, the remake now contains a main storyline, along with tons of side quests that guide the player through the most important features and locations in the game. And although the story isn't very interesting, well actually it's uh, pretty shallow and poorly written, but does a good job leading the player toward the most important stuff, while also leaving a lot of room for discoveries. And when I say discoveries, I actually mean something very specific in the context of this game. Both well-hidden secrets and things visible in plain sight are now part of a huge new addition to Ragnarok, the Adventurer Handbook. The Handbook serves as a way to track the player's progression through the world of Midgard in form of experience points, which are tied to the player's account and not their characters. Basically, each new thing you do in the game, like talking to NPCs, taming pets, killing monsters, doing anything you haven't done before, will increase your adventurer's experience, which in turn will rise your adventurer rank, allowing you access to new and completely unique skills. Those skills range from immensely useful, like increasing your backpack size or giving you additional skill bars, to some silly stuff like ability to take selfies or walk with other players hand in hand. Oh, and some discoveries also give you minor stat boosts, so exploration is really worth it. So, the handbook gives you a lot of reasons to do something different, but to make things even more interesting, it also serves as a reference guide for all the things you can find in the game. Looking for some materials to farm? The handbook will tell you exactly what to hunt. Wondering what stats a particular card has? No problem, it's all there. So, there's no question that Adventurer Handbook is a great addition, but it also is far from being the only one. Most importantly, Ragnarok M is filled with tons of various activities, challenges, events and more. Generally, we can divide those into two categories, daily tasks and both weekly and monthly events. Daily activities include simple stuff like riding a whale with your guardmates or conquering so-called rifts with your friends. Then, on the weekly side of things, you'll be participating in player vs player competitions, War of Imperium, Ranked Arena, etc., repelling monster invasions, or progressing through increasingly difficult Endless Tower. Finally, monthly events are themed activities tasking you with very specific challenges, for example stuff like finding and killing unique monsters, gathering X amount of gems, or completing mini quest lines. Nothing super fancy, but nice change of pace nonetheless. All of those additions might seem like a lot to take in all at once, but luckily Ragnarok M mindfully allows the player to decide how much time they want to spend in the game, thanks to numerous quality of life improvements. Most notably, the remake now features an automated fighting system. It allows the player to step away from the game while the character continues fighting selected monsters. And although similar systems are already well established in mobile games, players coming directly from Ragnarok Online will probably find this feature to be quite controversial. However, I can happily say Ragnarok M managed to implement it in a way that doesn't take away from the fun. First of all, it's only an auto-fighting system and nothing more. 
it won't progress through your quest, it won't level up your character, it won't do anything except fight monsters. Secondly, because how limited it is, it's not something you'll be using all the time. In fact, in some cases, especially in events, it might be even downright counterproductive to use it. All of this together means that rather than being a substitute for gameplay, the auto-fighting system serves to complement it. You simply get a tool that will help you minimize the grind, so you can focus on other things. And let me emphasize this, you're gonna be doing a lot of other things. In the remake, monster hunting is just a fraction of the whole game, meaning you'll be spending only a few hours a day at it at most. At most, because Ragnarok M also features a stamina system, which makes excessive grinding a pointless endeavor. Although, to be perfectly honest, in reality you're going to be spending even less time than that, maybe even none at all, thanks to multiple ways you can speed up the usage of stamina while still gaining 100% of all possible rewards. There's even an option to send your pets to farm for you. Gravity really made sure to push all the boring stuff to the sidelines while bringing all the fun things to the forefront. Finally, let's talk about microtransactions. Ragnarok M uses a very simple freemium model. You get standard currency, Zinis, by playing the game, and you get premium currency, Big Cat Coins, by paying real money. At the time of writing this review, I can confidently say it's mostly a fair and non-intrusive system, at least on the European servers. Not only does it have any of so-called calls to action, messages are in place to spend money, it also doesn't lock anything behind a paywall. Okay, but what do paying users get then, right? Well, for the most part, it's exactly the same things that the free-to-player users get, but faster or in bigger quantities. Even premium items are equally obtainable from gachas, if you gather enough free tickets from the weekly events. Basically, you're never forced to spend money. Of course you can, but Ragnarok won't be any less fun if you decide not to. There are still many things I haven't mentioned about the remake, the living up world, the taming of pets, the push toward making friends, but I don't want to sit here and talk all day. All that matters is that Gravity finally managed to create a worthy successor to a beloved game. My final score, 8 out of 10. Ragnarok M is a great mobile MMORPG that might have some minor issues here and there, but otherwise is an easy recommendation for both new and returning players. Thank you for watching.